are doing. I forgot to make an intro for this video, so this is a retrospective effort. So the bike's behind me. Uh, we're going to replace the original light cluster with some new, smaller and tidier looking ones. So let's get on with it. If you've had a, a hunt around online, you'll know that there's quite a lot of uh, decent lights, CE approved lights for the bobber and, and any motorbike in fact. Um, the the favourites of mine are the ones from uh, Motor Gadget and from Kellerman. Uh, for the mod that I'm doing on the back of my bike I've decided to go with the Kellerman Atos which if, uh, if you just do that, it's not even out of focus. So this is the Atto DFs, so this is a combination light which does the uh, rear tail light, the brake light and the indicator all in one. Now, they're actually very very small um, which is why I, I like them. So I don't know if you can see the size of them compared to my, my finger there. I'll just try and hold that. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty tiny. Um, so they're sold uh, as singles, you've got to buy two. Um, so not, not the cheapest but they're high quality. Um, like I say, three, three in one lights. And as you can see here, I've already removed the rear fender or mudguard as we call it here in the UK. And uh, I've stripped out the wiring loom that ran through the inside of the mudguard that done the rear light cluster and the number plate light. Um, this is all taped up and inside a bit of conduit when you pull it off. So I've ripped all that off uh, and I've identified which cables are which. Um, so that I can run the cable from a new number plate light and the cables for the new light cluster that I'm putting up under the seat. And you can see I've also removed the, the seat already um, because I'm going to rerun these wires up through a different passage. Um, to remove the seat you've got two uh, T50 bolts at the front of the seat here and then I think that's a T40 that's uh, holds it just up under the tank. We've also got to release uh, a couple of bolts either side of the, the tank so you can lift the tank up to, to, to get to that bolt that's in there. Removing the rear guard with the wheel on is a bit of a pain. It's doable but it's, uh, it's probably worthwhile just taking the wheel off. So I mean when I put it back on um, I, I'm going to take the wheel off to put it back on because it's safe a bit of time. It'll be a lot easier. But to remove it you've got uh, a bolt either side here. Um, the difficult ones are uh, see if I can get these in focus down the bottom there. Just see them there. There's two little tabs. Those those two bolts are a bit of a pain when you've got the tire there. Um, so to get to them, it'd be much easier just taking the tire off. So you can see I've already got the seat seat off um, and disassembled. So uh, once you get the seat off, there's a, a bunch of uh, screws or bolts that go into the bottom of the seat pan here that hold on to the plastic part of the seat. So I've already taken them out and remove that and put that to the side for the moment. So you can see the, the size of the seat pan there and the size of these little Kellerman um, rear lights that I'm going to fit, so pretty tiny, pretty indiscreet. If you take a closer look at the bottom of the aluminium seat pan, on the very bottom most part of the pan when it's mounted you'll see that there's these two um, holes, which are, I'm assuming are, are drain holes. Now these holes sit just a little bit too far forward of the, the radius on the bottom of the pan for where I would like to put my light. So you can see I've already drilled two 5mm holes um, just aft or just after uh, the, the, the two pre-existing holes. Now these are pretty much on the, the extreme bottom radius of the seat pan. Uh, so when you're looking at the pan from the other side or from underneath, uh, the, the lights are right on the bottom and, and pointing straight back. These two holes that I've drilled weren't randomly placed. I've actually used uh, the pre-existing holes um, to gauge measurements for where to put them because the other side of the seat pan and the seat itself, have a look here, it's not it's not smooth. It's um, There's a lot of framework to the underside of this seat. Uh, so it was important that when creating the locations for the lights to be fitted, that that doesn't interfere with anything on the the underside of the seat. Now I don't know how much heat these uh, these little lights actually generate um, because obviously I haven't installed them yet but I'm assuming that they must get a little bit hot if they've decided to put a heat sink on the back of it. Now the heat sink or, or nut is essentially going to be encapsulated between the aluminium seat pan and the seat. Um, 
so there's not going to be much in the way of airflow around it. However, the light itself is going to be in a position where there's going to be quite a lot of airflow around it, and the light and the nut on the other side are going to be securing through the aluminium seat pan itself. So the, the, the aluminium pan should act um, as as a heat dissipator as well. So as you can you can see, the heat sinks or the nuts moved on the inside there. And another thing I'm going to have to consider is that the the length of the thread on the lights only protrudes through the seat pan by two or three threads. So I'll probably stick some Loctite or similar on there when I'm when I've got to finally secure it. Uh, the seat pan's actually thicker than than it looks. Um, running the cables also going to have to be careful that these are um, secured and, and don't be compromised by the the ribbon on the underside of the seat uh, when it's mounted back to the pan. But you can see the idea there of what the lights look like under the pan. There's lots of options um, you see online for other sorts of lights. You know, there's lights that run along the, the back here and underneath, etc. But I wanted to do things a little bit differently um, to the more common way of mounting these Kellerman's on the little brackets under the frame of the bike. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, what they look like. Um, when it's all in place. So I've fitted the modified uh, wiring loom back onto the bike. Um, it's coming through the front end of the seat pan there. I've drilled a, a hole through the front end of the seat pan and I've reused a piece of uh, hard plastic conduit that was fitted to the underside of the original mudguard and I fitted it over the top of the seat mount. Um, that allows me to lift the seat uh, mount up and down um, and potentially lift the, the, the seat up and out of the way uh, should I need to get to the underside of it. So the loom runs down through the back there and down into the top of the battery box as the original loom did. Uh, so now I'm at the stage where I need to connect the loom onto the new lights. And if you look closely here you'll see some white marks around the seat pan. So I put some uh, some compound on the bottom of the seat itself uh, and then refitted it to the pan so that I could see where the seat contacts the pan. That way I know when I'm running the, the cables and then secure them down that I'm not going to compress or damage them with the bottom of the seat once I put the, the seat back on. Having a look at the instructions from Kellerman it tells you that the New lights should be installed in place of the existing with the provided heat sink and secured at 5 newton meters. So the new lights have been permanently secured. I've got my wiring in place, it's taped down. Kellerman also provides you with a small set of crimp connectors to use for connecting your, your wiring and also some heat shrink. I'm planning to solder rather than use uh, connectors so it's going to be a permanent fixing within the seat um, but I am going to use the heat shrink so let's go on with so you can see here now I've, I've taped the uh, the wiring down into the seat pan just so that it stays in place whilst I'm putting the seat on because I don't want it moving around and getting caught under any of the ribbon of the underside of the seat. Um, I've also stuck a little bit of uh, silicon sealant in there just where the connectors are just to hold them in place in the, the ribbon there um, of the seat pan. Uh, so everything's pretty secure and now I'm just going to reassemble the seat together. So a quick test before we, uh, before we put the seat pan back together. Um, there we go tail lights, brake lights, hazards, left indicator, right indicator. Now you'll see that the pulse rate or the flash rate of the indicators is, uh, is too fast. That's because of the lower load that the LEDs um, take as opposed to the, the original lamps. So we need to go in and need to change the settings for that. Okay, so to change the type setting for your indicators, what you want to do is press and hold the I button on the left side of your handlebars here, 
and uh, hold it in with the ignition off. Turn the ignition on, as you see on the dash, lights up. When it comes up with the word type, let it go. And you'll see there that type 3 is my current setting. So with that up you can then scroll through. So I'm going to scroll to type 4. Type 4 and see it. And then I press and hold to save. When it comes up with the normal dash reading, that's you. And, and, and that's it saying you can actually see here um, the indicator is now flashing at the right rate. So there you go, you can now see with this setting change that the indicators are now flashing at the correct rate. All back together. There you have it, Kellerman Atto DFs. Three in one lights mounted under the seat. Temporary number plate mount on the side there until we wait the new one arriving. Overall, quite happy with how those look. Got a few more mods up my sleeve. Waiting in the garage, ready. Check back in a couple of weeks, see what else I'm up to. All the best.